rain and heavy cloud cover dampen some of the enthusiasm for today's solar eclipse. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The solar eclipse amazed millions across North America today, but rainy weather here in Thunder Bay clouded the experience for local viewers. That still didn't stop residents across the city from trying to catch a glimpse of the rare event. Nev Ben Pelt reports. Visitors at Fort William Historical Park were a little disappointed as rainy weather dampened their chances at seeing the much-anticipated solar eclipse in person. And even though they had to put the telescopes away, people were treated to a live video feed of the full eclipse in the David Thompson Astronomical Observatory. Outdoor education specialist Jonathan Reed notes the area was forecasted to have around 75% coverage for the solar eclipse, less than ideal for the celestial phenomenon. The moon is uh, moving across the face of the sun from our perspective, right? And as it crosses the sun, uh, it'll be a very noticeable crescent sun, and it will get a little bit darker, uh, not as dark as it will in areas of totality, uh, but you will get a bit of darkness. Uh, and even through the, if the clouds lighten up a little bit, you even see the effects through the clouds. Guests still made the most of the celebration, which also featured a number of activities, giving them a chance to learn more about the eclipse and space. We asked some attendees what their favorite part of the event was. My favorite has probably been all of it. I can't choose, choose one. Probably about how they're able to almost replicate what stuff from the moon would look like, like over at that glass table. That was probably one of my favorites. Oh, just looking around. My favorite thing I've learned today is about the black hole. I liked about the Mars, how fast the Mar Mars year was. I liked that. That was kind of cool. Many people from the community also made their way down to Hillcrest Park with the hopes of seeing the eclipse. With rain in the forecast all afternoon, people didn't have their hopes high to see anything crazy but still wanted to make their way over to the north side of the city to be part of the special day. I kind of expected it actually, to be honest with you, because I've been following the weather. And um, yeah, it's, I wish it would get dark. It's kind of nothing really significant <laughs> happening yet. But uh, yeah, so this is, uh, it's cool uh, that uh, just to be part of this right now, a living history. Not much to say. No, no. I knew I wasn't going to see an eclipse, but I thought it would I had to take the dog for a walk anyway, and I thought, I'll oh, come see what an eclipse looks like in the rain, and now I know. Monday's eclipse was particularly important because it's the last total solar eclipse to be seen anywhere in North America for decades. With that being said, there will still be some partial ones to look forward to. Well, we have to wait till 2026 to see another little bit of a partial one, so maybe we'll get a chance then to make up for this one. It's super disappointing. We were kind of excited to see this. This is going to be one of the best ones visible for Thunder Bay in about 40 years. So, Unfortunately, we didn't need these glasses here in Thunder Bay today. We weren't able to see the eclipse. Many people did come out hopeful to see it, but unfortunately, the rain and clouds took over. Nev Van Pelt, TBT News. The city's clerk's office will present city council with some conflict resolution training opportunities this evening. For Councillor Rajni Agarwal, it comes following the latest Integrity Commissioner's report into Agarwal's conduct, this time as a Fort William BIA board member. The Integrity Commissioner had recommended that Agarwal be removed from the board for being rude and abrasive. But council opted against, pun against punishment last month, deciding instead that training would be more appropriate. The city's clerk report recommends that council will make it mandatory for Agarwal to attend. Any cost for the training will be covered by the city manager's office within its existing budget. A local pediatric clinic has been forced to close its doors to patients for several days after a vehicle driven by an impaired driver struck a building on Golf Links Road over the weekend. Thunder Bay Pediatrics will be closed until Thursday morning following the incident. The crash happened around 2 a.m. on Sunday. Police say the southbound vehicle crossed into oncoming traffic, drove across the sidewalk, collided with two trees, and then eventually the building itself, which is located close to the regional hospital. The 18-year-old driver was taken to hospital for treatment and has since been charged with impaired and dangerous driving. And that wasn't the only damage caused by an impaired driver this weekend. Around 9.45 on Saturday night, a 35-year-old driver hit a light post and then drove away. But their front license plate fell off in the crash and police found it at the scene. The accused in both incidents have been released but will appear in court to answer to their charges. 
Youth from across Anishinaabe Asking Nation made their way to Thunder Bay today for the second annual Tournament of Hope. The event features a number of sporting events to draw the focus to youth mental health. Lee Noonan explains. The Tournament of Hope is a week-long hockey, broomball and volleyball tournament that brings together youth from throughout Anishinaabe Asking Nation. Nan's massive territory takes up roughly two-thirds of the province and includes many isolated communities, with youth rarely getting the chance to meet with friends and family who might live hundreds of kilometres away. What does this tournament mean to you? What, what do you like about coming down here? Um, getting together with my friends. It means a lot. It's uh, get to hang out with friends, make new friends. I haven't seen some of these guys in, like, in months, you know, because I, I don't go on the res a lot, but, and, you know, they're not in the town a lot. But it's just really great. It's just really great to see them all, you know? Um, I think it really brings us together because we don't get much opportunities like that at home. In addition to a busy schedule of hockey, broomball and volleyball games, the week-long event will also include wellness and cultural sessions aimed at fostering good mental health. The tournament is called the Tournament of Hope. What do you guys think that means? How does it make you feel? Um, good. Happy. That just means like hope for our future. You know, hope that, that, you know, that someday it can be, it can be like easier. And I think it makes the youth really happy to attend this. Yeah, I know I'm happy already and I haven't even played yet. The youth we spoke to all agreed that staying active through sports was itself important to their mental health. Whenever I'm mad, I just, I like to play hockey. It makes me happy. Like, like right now, it's, this is a great game. I'm having a lot of fun, you know, it makes me help, more healthy too. It's just a lot of fun. Yeah, it just takes my mind off the, I guess, everyday life, I guess. Just uh, get to go out and play hockey. When you feel alone and just being around people and playing, it just helps. Me and my friends, we really enjoy playing sports, especially if it's together, because that's a way to distract ourselves or remind us of all the good things. There are 14 First Nations represented here at the tournament with more than 600 youth coming from as far away as Kitchener, Mixip and Inuwag and as close by as right here in the city. Lee Noonan, TBT News. Thunder Bay Superior North MPP Lise Vaujois is accusing the Ford government of giving up on the Terrace Bay Mill. She spoke in the legislature today and referenced this comment made by the Premier during his visit to Thunder Bay last week. It's a very tough situation, tough market. Uh, we'll do everything we can to support the workers, but that whole sector right now is uh, challenged, not just here in Ontario, across the country, across North America. So we're there to retrain uh, the workers, find them new opportunities, new jobs. Bourgeois stood at Queen's Park today to say that's a terrible message to deliver to those affected by the mill closure. India-based Aditya Birla Group announced the indefinite shutdown in early January, laying off nearly 400 people. But Natural Resources and Forestry Minister Graydon Smith contends it's the NDP that has it wrong. Here's the exchange. Forestry experts are telling you sustainably produced forest products are climate friendly, in demand and can provide a much greater contribution to Ontario's economy than they do now. The closure not only affects all the families and businesses in Terrace Bay and Scriber, it affects workers and families throughout the entire region, about 10,000 people. Is this government giving up on the pulp and paper industry? It's typical, Mr. Speaker, that they just don't get the brief right. They don't hear and see what is going on, what this government is doing for Northern Ontario. Of course we want that mill open in Terrace Bay, Mr. Speaker, and we've talked numerous times with leaders in the area about how we're working on doing that. But more importantly, Mr. Speaker, what we're doing is saying we look after workers in this party, and everybody in the North knows that. Bourgeois countered by saying the government hasn't reached out to anyone in the region about the issue. Still at Queen's Park, there are concerns about loopholes in health care that are being exploited. The NDP is accusing the Premier of focusing instead on issues that don't matter. CTV Siobhan Morris explains. Paper bags are making a comeback at the LCBO. They were phased out for good in September, a bid to save trees and keep waste out of landfills. But the LCBO is working on a revival at the request of the Premier. Doug Ford writing to the agency's president and CEO, 
At a time when many Ontario families are already struggling to make ends meet, every additional expense counts. That includes charging customers for reusable bags instead of the free paper bags that the LCBO previously offered. The LCBO can't say when you'll see paper bags in store again, but they're working on it. Opposition parties think surely Ford has bigger fish to fry. I question the government's priorities. It seems like a massive distraction from the Premier's failure to address the housing affordability crisis. I think more Ontarians want to have a family dog. But the finance minister defends bringing back free bags. This government is obsessed with making life more affordable. The shift as new Democrats argue more and more Ontarians are having to dig deep for basic health care. People are being asked to come up with hundreds, even thousands of dollars in fees uh, to be able to access primary care. There's worry that legislative loopholes are being exploited with charges to see a nurse practitioner and the use of numbered companies for billing. The Canada Health Act says that there should not be any barriers for you to access primary care services. Barriers the NDP says more patients are bumping up against. Losing our family doctor to a private facility has put me at a terrible risk. I can't afford to pay thousands of dollars just to see my family doctor. Opposition parties feel Ontario can change this, but the government puts the blame with Ottawa. Our government will not tolerate clinics taking advantage of a loophole created by federal legislation. If the federal government doesn't take action to ensure Ontarians and Canadians can access publicly funded health care, we will. The NDP leader doesn't see the point in waiting. The people of Ontario are demanding action now. OCTV's Siobhan Morris reporting. Two North Shore First Nations are also criticizing the Ford government for registering mining claims on territory that's subject to ongoing land claims and in areas of high cultural value. The chiefs of the communities, formerly known as Pick River and Pick Mulbert, say the province is damaging relationships and causing uncertainty for the mining industry. Lee Noonan has more. Neighboring First Nations, Biktigong Nishnabeg and Netamazagamig Nishnabeg, are taking it upon themselves to tell the mining industry what areas of their territory are and are not open for development. Netamazagamig Chief Louis Kisawa and Biktagong Chief Duncan Mishano both say the province has no jurisdiction to approve mining exploration on their lands. Colonialism is alive and well today. You know, uh, it's a colonial act and uh, it's oppressing our voice. Our assertion is that this is unceded territory and that we own all those resources that are out there. And until uh, such a time as that, that, that we may... Uh, and I'd say may sign a treaty, uh, those uh, uh, resources are ours. Both leaders say their communities are generally open to resource development in their territory if it's done sustainably and in partnership with the First Nation. But they've identified some areas of high cultural value that are completely off limits. They say the province has allowed thousands of claims within these no-go areas. There are certain areas that will never be mining mining going on. There's ceremonial sites, you know, there, there's sites that we harvest, uh, whether it's medicine or food, th those types of things that we need to sustain ourselves, you know, that, that's a part of who we are as a people. Since 2020, the ministry has kept a notice of caution on the region, advising mining companies that the area is subject to ongoing land claim litigation, but the First Nations say the province is giving companies false hope and wasting their resources by continuing to register claims. They want all claims in the no-go areas cancelled. We don't want any mining basically in, within those cultural centers in various periods. The province uh, is uh, making these mining companies believe that, uh, you know, at some day if they come up with an our body that uh, they'll have a mine there, you know. They won't. We won't allow that to happen. Both chiefs say the current government's handling of the mining file has strained relationships between the province and First Nations and caused uncertainty for mining companies. They aim to provide that clarity themselves by publishing clear restrictions on mining exploration. Lee Noonan, TBT News. The popular spring home and garden show has wrapped up for another year. The CLE grounds were packed with people for the big event over the weekend, all looking for the latest home and backyard renovation ideas. Jessica Clement was there. 
Over 5,000 people came out to the CLE grounds over the weekend to get a head start on their backyard and home renovation projects. The annual CLE Spring Home and Garden Show saw around 150 exhibitors and featured a little something for everyone. It's all these people with the smaller arts and crafts are in this room. A lot of it is outside. There's pools. There's a, sept a lot to do with septic things. A lot of There's a whole home display over in the uh, Heritage Building. There's a large garden display over there as well. So most of it is uh, people that do outside work all through the summer. Event Chair Judy Anderson notes they started the annual event 26 years ago as there was a need for it in the community. She says she's happy it's still going strong. Right after this, I'm going to be getting phone calls saying, put me down for next year and coming back. A lot of people have told us this, this is all the advertising they do for a whole year. And that's, that's all they need. They get all their contacts from this show and away they go for the, until next year. With so much online shopping taking place in the modern day, a lot of companies don't get the chance to meet face-to-face -face with potential customers. Dave Radford, general manager of the Power Center, says the show allows local companies to break those barriers. It's great for us because we get to uh, talk to these customers, let them know that what we have available and the uh, ability to come to the Power Center as an example. A lot of people didn't realize we sell barbecues, so now they can come and get a barbecue from us and, and we assemble them for them, so we make it real easy for them. Dave Haywood, general manager of Lockstone, had similar sentiments, saying the show is important for both companies and attendees. People are either updating their existing projects, doing new projects. They're looking to get ideas and to get some expert advice on what they're going to do with their home. It's a great jump start to your season. I mean, not only with us, people getting ideas, coming back to our showroom to follow up on their ideas, but also all the contractors here getting the leads to go do quotes for people. Jessica Clement. TBT News. Well, today was a very windy and wet Monday, and not the happiest way to start the week, I'd say. A little bit more miserable. I think you described it as poopy earlier. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> kind of I did describe it as poopy. <laughs> well, it really wasn't all that pleasant. I mean, we have to admit it. We had rain, we had winds gusting up to 40 kilometers an hour. Uh, but the temperature really didn't move very much. Last night was very, very mild. We had a low of four and we had a high during the day of six. So that's a whole two degrees difference in temperatures with all that rain this afternoon. And areas to the west into Atacokan and Fort Francis, they also didn't really see much fluctuation in temperatures. Fort Francis had a low of about three or four as well, and they're currently at five Celsius. They've had a lot of fog. Red Lake was mostly cloudy for much of the day. It's now completely clouded over, but the temperatures were much more normal in their differences between the night and the day. They had an overnight low of minus one, a high of 10. So you had eastward into Greenstone. They're mostly cloudy at this hour. They started out at minus four. Four, and they're currently at that 10 Celsius, similar temperatures in Armstrong. And then it really warms up as you head along the northeastern shores of Lake Superior, Marathon at 12, 13 in Wawa, Sault Ste. Marie, 12 under partly cloudy skies. And in the Sioux, the overnight temperatures were around the six degree mark. So they started off very warm. In fact, they started off as warm as we ended up. Now, here in the city of Thunder Bay tonight, we are once again going to see the temperatures not moving, not doing much at all. In fact, even the sky conditions aren't going to change that much because we are looking at showers or possibly those periods of drizzle continuing overnight tonight into tomorrow. Here's the good news. The rain should taper off for the most part in the morning. And if you're not happy with those single digits, we are going to be heading into the double-digit zones for the next few days and possibly into the weekend. Okay, well, that is good news, Fiona. Unfortunately, we could have used some of that today yes. not to rub salt into the wound Ooh. of any of those who were hoping to catch a glimpse of the eclipse. But there were other places across North America where the views were much more favorable. We'll bring you that and more when your Monday News Hour continues after the break. So we flew in from BC, from British Columbia, because we weren't going to get totality there. So um, my parents live in Oakville, so I thought, let's do this once in a lifetime. 